Hey, it's Dry Bear. Today, I want to talk about five of the best starter builds that you can use in power. These are early game builds that you can get online almost instantaneously the second you step foot into a new server, and they grant you insane spikes in power, allowing you to clear dungeons and world bosses with ease, and give you a little bit of utility to allow you to move about the world with more confidence as you're exploring. Now, the first starter build is one that I believe to be the strongest starting build in the entire game. This is a ridiculous jump in output for offensive power for you and your party. And if I were to do a speed run on the hardest difficulty to get to max level, I would probably start with this and keep with it until about mid game because it is seriously overpowered. Now this is a pure dark team. You're going to be using one Hucrates and four Daedrians. But what makes this so powerful is that the Hucrates is actually a pretty useful to have out and partying with you while you're fighting. He has some decent abilities that he learns naturally or can be taught, and he has a nice passive that increases the dark attack power of all dark pals on your team, and you're going to have four daydreams on your team with you. Now, the reason we like this is that the daydreams necklace, a collar for daydream, you can unlock this through technology, craft it early on with some very easy to get materials. And once you have this, it's a key item that makes it so that any daydream that ever shows up in your party is going to show up behind you and follow you around at all times, which means you can have four daydreams active and firing while you also are attacking while your Hucrates is also attacking. So you can have six of you firing on an enemy all at once with scaled dark damage from the Hucrates passive. Not only that, but the attacks from the daydreams are actually AOE area of effect, which means you're going to be cleaving enemies that group up and doing tons and tons of damage. Luckily, both of these pals can be picked up right off the bat. They're very easy to access. So right at the bat, you see where my character is, this yellow arrow here on the screen. That is going to be the starting location. You spawn just at the bottom of this island here. And then where the heat marks are is going to be where you can find Hucrates. You can find him anywhere on this island going across the peninsulas into the other islands and land masses, you will find Hucrates everywhere. Now, same thing goes for Daydream, but just keep in mind that Daydream is a nighttime only pal, which means that he's only going to spawn when it's nighttime. If it's not, you can rest in bed or just wait till nighttime and then you'll see them everywhere. You can also find them in dungeons, any cave dungeon, uh, early on will have daydreams in them so you can farm them and collect them and from that standpoint you can even find shinies or good passes and you just need to craft the daydream necklace and have all of them in your party bring the hookertees out and you are ready to go slay when you're hunting for really good pals here you just want to pick up some extra damage or defense so Hard in a body or bulky body is really good for Hookertees as well as Ferocious, just getting some extra damage in there. If you can find a shiny one with a lucky passive, that's also super useful. Then when it comes to the Daydream, since they're not going to be out at all, you don't really have to worry about any major passes for them, but finding passes for yourself can be useful. So you can use Vanguard to give yourself some extra player attack. You can pick up things like Stronghold Strategist, which gives you extra defense, things like that. They'll just always have that benefit to you, even though they're not out and active. So that is actually the one of the high Highest, if not the highest damage output you can have early on in the game. The next build I want to give you is one that is an all-rounder. If you're someone that isn't trying to min-max damage output, isn't worried about the synergies of the of the pals, you just want a really well-rounded build that gives you everything you need for every situation and also has insane tools for exploration and enjoying the game as a player. And for this, I like having Traversal with Dire Howl and Nightwing. Both of these pals can be picked up early on in the game. They're very plentiful all over the main island, but the Dire Hal is extremely fast. His passive allows him to move faster than most mounts. And if you get a good one, like a challenge level one from a dungeon or a boss level one, you can get some really good stats on it as well. And then the Nightwing is going to move a little bit slower than Dire Howl as a mount, but is a flying mount, which means you can go over oceans and water. You can go up and down elevations, and it's very useful for scaling and moving about the environment. Now, there are some better flying mounts later on in the game, but again, this, this list is focused on the early game, the starter pals that you can get right away that allow you to get off the ground. The remaining three, I like getting Tombat, Budler and Leespunk. These are 
decent fighters. You can swap between these in combat. They all hold their own in a 1v1 and can do some really useful tactics for you. So you'll have Traversal with the Nightwing and the Dire Howl. And the reason I like having Tombat, Fuddler, and Lee's Punk is because they all have sonar abilities that allow you to scan for useful things. The Lee's Punk will allow, to, allow you to scan for nearby dungeons. So when you're exploring a new continent, you don't know where the dungeons are, you can bring him out, use the sonar, and it'll mark on your radar where the dungeons are. If nothing shows up on the radar, it means that there are no dungeons nearby. I've made a habit in game of marking all the dungeons with a little house icon so that when I want to go back and farm dungeons for challenge level mobs or pals or get extra resources which are plentiful in dungeons, I can just go around and find all the house icons that I've marked as I've explored and found them and put them down so it's super easy and Lee's Punk makes this very accessible. Budler, on the other hand, has a sonar ability that allows him to scan for ore so you can actually find useful ore. Most of what you need to farm in this game is, is actual minerals so you will need stone at the beginning of the game then you can automate that through your pals but then you need the paldeum you need ore you need coal you need sulfur all of these can be scanned for with fuddler and it makes it super easy to just scan and see within a couple hundred meters where you need to go for resources collect it all head home stock up on your base and head back out again and its sonar ability is super useful and lastly is tombat a dark Pal, quite potent in combat, probably my favorite of these to use in general combat, just fighting anything that might, you know, disregarding weaknesses to elements, super strong, but his sonar ability allows him to scan for enemies and pals, which means if you're looking to capture specific pals, like you're trying to ascend them by combining them together, or there's a specific kind you're looking for, you're trying to capture new ones to get more XP or to expand your pal deck, and you can use Tombat's scan, his sonar ability, to look for nearby enemies. So you can track them down and say, okay, I need a Jolt Hog. Let me scan with Tombat. There's a Jolt Hog down there. I'll follow my radar and get to it, and it makes it all super simple. Again, these are all early game pals. So you'll find Dire Hal just outside of the starter area in any direction. He's all over the place. You can even find him in dungeons sometimes as well, or even as the final boss. You'll find him in these land masses right next to the starting area where you see my yellow arrow. All of that is there, and again, he's available at nighttime and during the day. Nightwings are even closer. There are some just outside of the monastery that you spawn in uh, near the red area and the church. You'll be able to find them here. And then again, if you go to these other land masses, you'll find Nightwings all over the place. Super low level. You can find them at level three or level four sometimes. Super easy to catch and add to your party. Now, these punks are a little bit harder to get access to. Most of the easily farmable these punks are in higher level areas like the volcano area or even further up here in the ice area you're going to find some lease punks that are pretty useful however the reason i like including this in a starter build mostly because of the sonar ability is because lee's punk is one of the most common pals you'll find in raids early on so if you start a base and you get raided you'll find lee's punks in most raids at least one or two of them as they move forward and then you'll also run into Lee's punks in dungeons and even when you go up against the syndicate so there's syndicate all over in here especially when you go up towards the area where you can fight the syndicate boss they will usually have Lee's punks on staff or nearby so it's very easy to find Lee's punks going through that you're not going to find them out walking around in the wild in the starter areas so wait for a raid and capture one or wait until you run to a thug that has one or just check the syndicate areas and you'll find Lee's punks that way you just need to get one because you're just using it for the sonar anyway Fuddler is a ground type uh pal I keep trying to refrain from saying the other p word <laughs> is a pal that uh doesn't spawn too much in the early starting areas so you see like his his area it's up here in the mountainous regions and even past in in the gray smoke areas you'll find like level 30 to 35 fuddlers up here in the desert but what's super easy to get fuddlers is that they are extremely common in early game dungeons so even though the habitat doesn't show up here on the map or the starting area there are a couple early game dungeons that you can run to and you'll almost every single time find anywhere from two to six fuddlers in that dungeon the easiest one to do is right next to the small settlement so if you spawn right here in the bottom right of this little peninsula head down the road and go west all the way over until you hit this kind of like rocky area go to the small settlement and then go down towards the water where the boats are in the settlement and there's a dungeon down there that's like level 13. When you go inside, you'll find level 6 to level 10 Fuddlers everywhere. And if it doesn't work, you can leave, reset it, 
go back in or you can go to the dungeon that's up here by the syndicate tower as well right next to the waypoint you can jump into there but both these dungeons will have a high density of fuddlers in them so even though you won't find them in the wild here you'll find them in the caves very early on in the game which makes this build come together combats are also very common in the early stages of the game just keep in mind that they are nighttime only so if you're looking during the day you won't see any combats here but you can see that just outside the monastery at nighttime you can run into combats anywhere in this area you'll see them all over the place heading up into these small like island peninsulas over here or these little like desert and rocky mountain areas over here you'll find tombats all over the place at night and you just need to pick one up and that completes that and that's the all-rounder build which has everything you need to explore the world but let's get back to some very powerful offensive starters that were great and to simplify things from the last build let's go with my sweepa build which is incredibly easy to get online and super simple because all you got to worry about is making one pal super strong and that is going to be the sweepa so the swe species comes in two different forms the sweepa which is the bigger version and more powerful version and the swees which are the smaller version and the sweepa has a passive on him that makes it so the stats of you and i believe both you and the sweepa but it might just be the sweepa while fighting together while he's out and walking around with you stats will increase on the sweepa for every SWE that's in your party. So they don't even have to be active. As long as they're in your party, you can get bonus and that's for each one. So this build is just going to be one super amped sweeper and then four SWEs put into your party so that you can make him even stronger. And what's great about this is it's an ice element, only weak to fire, and then you don't have to worry about that for every other element. So you can have backups there or you can take it. Usually you get some really good stats on the sweepas as well. And what's great about these is they learn really strong ice abilities as they level up. They get the Icicle Cutter, which is one of my favorite abilities in the game because it's this big horizontal blade that travels really far. So you can hit a lot of targets. It's very consistent. You can also get Crisp Breath unlocked later on. They also have Icicle Shards, which work really well in the very beginning of the game, which means that they are very consistent in dealing damage. And they're super tanky as well, especially if you get a burly body a passive on them when you loot them and if you craft a mantle you can ride him as well for farming and for casual movement just going around the world collecting material now for this one because you're gonna have a, having sweepa out the whole time you do want to get some uh tankiness on him he does good damage naturally and will be scaled up by the swedes that you have in your party if you want to get burly body or muscle head or extra beast beasts that can really kind of tank him up and get him tankier and then because we have these passive uh pals in our party it's good to get the stats on them that give you power so vanguard stronghold strategist those kind of things that make you stronger motivational leader for movement speed so you can actually make your character stronger even though those those pals are tucked away in your party you don't really ever bring them out when it comes to habitat they share the exact same habitat because they're basically the same thing just i guess maybe mature and young or juvenile the one i would recommend going to here is just north of uh, the, uh, the the sand area. So you spawn here, just head north, and this spot up here in this little patch of area, you can find a ton of Swedes and Sweepas that are like level five, level six, super low level, very easy to capture. And you can also find a bunch here in the kind of sandy crossover from the grass areas. You will have to run through some rocky mountains to climb up and over and run towards. So you can go to either one of these. And then your other option for that is if you start here at this starting area, if you head straight west all the way down, to the sweep a world boss he's level 11 a little bit higher than right at level you know the very beginning but if you get to like level six or seven you can capture him no problem you'll just need a, a higher quality uh pal sphere like the second quality pal sphere and what's great is this world boss also comes with the challenger status so you can actually make him stronger and he's already a boss level monster when you capture him and there's going to be two or three swees following around uh nearby so that you can very easily pick those up all three of them and then grab the boss and you got yourself a full party from that if you don't want to go to their natural habitat and capture them you can just go get the world boss straight up and the list wouldn't be complete if we didn't mention a fire build this is because fire is the only element in this game that has a strength against two different elements fire burns grass and it also melts ice no other element in the game is strong against two different elements it does have a weakness against water but it is strong against two others which makes it a very great choice for having a full party. So a full fire starter build using only the palace in the beginning of the game are going to be Fox Parks, which is an excellent pick 
because he's right available in the beginning of the game and has a special craftable that turns him into a flamethrower for a short period, which is great for AoE or even single target DPS on bosses that you're trying to clear. Not only that, the Fox Parks is easy to get to right at the very beginning, and then you're going to pick up two other fire pals that are both very strong. They take a little bit of a hike to get to where they are. They'll still be low level and easy to capture, but you'll have to get there in order to do it. And that's going to be the Ruby, which gives you a nice passive. It makes all the fire pals on your team have higher attack power while she is in the party, which is super cool. You can also pick up a Kelpsy Ignis. This is the subspecies of Kelpsy. It is the fire version, has the same passives that I don't believe they stack. I've tested, it doesn't look like they do, but you can grab either one or both if you want, just to make sure that you have that backup there for the extra little bit. And then for early game, I would just use the Fox Parks, but then I would transition into having the Ruby out or the other option for fire. I think Fox Parks is great for the special ability, but as far as basic combat, I think Ruby excels a lot better at doing great target damage hitting consistently and dealing with a lot of situations. And the other early game fire pal I recommend is Flam Bell. And you're gonna find this in the same spot you find Ruby. They're super low level, like level three to level six, very easy to capture, very easy to get. But they come with some of the best abilities in the game that make them super strong and really good combat. So once the party is put together, I would bring Fox Parks out in order to be able to use the flamethrower and then switch to Ruby or Flambelle for just general combat damage output and you'll be able to do a ton that way. Now, this is one of those times where you do want to be aware of the single element bonus. Unlike the dark uh, party where you only have one target that can be damageable and you can bring him back, you can bring Hookertes back before they get attacked and still have your daydreams out. In this case, you do want to have a backup for the weakness that fire has, which is water. However, water is weak to electric, so having one or two electric pals in your party is great because when you run into a strong water enemy, you can switch to your electric pals and do tons of damage to them and then switch back to fire to be able to balance that out. So for early game, I recommend getting a spark it super well-rounded great pal in combat overall or you can also get a jolt hog i think in general combat not quite as strong as the spark it but does have a nice craftable that turns it into a giant explosive grenade which can be situationally useful for general purpose you'll find fox parks right near the starting zone if you go out towards these grassland fields up here by the red sand church as well and then down south on the other side of the water you can go up here to across this landmass to find fox Parks over here as well. They're also in this fire region where you're going to find the Ruby and the Flambell. And you can go over here towards just before the volcano. Uh, pretty decently leveled Fox Parks as well for capture. Sparkets are just past that. So anywhere in this mountainous region where the settlement is or where the Red Sand Church is or the Black Market Dealer, you'll find Sparkets all over there as well. And you'll find higher level ones on the top side of the mountain area as well. Same thing goes for the Jolt Hog. So you can grab your, you can basically leave the starting zone Go here, pick up your uh, pick up your Fox Parks, then pick up your Spark It, and then pick up a Jolt Hog all along the way. When it comes to rubies, you can find them in this water area for some reason right over here. So if you leave the starting area and go up into the northeast, you'll find them here. Or I would recommend just running all the way over to this volcano region, this like rift lava region right here that's close to the starting area. You'll find rubies, you'll find flambells, you'll find tons of fire mobs and pals that you can collect and capture to add to your party. You'll find the rubies there and you'll also find the flambells there as well. You're pretty much exclusively gonna find the flambells there for early game as most of the other flambells are gonna be in the fire areas which are gonna be much higher level. The flambells you'll find in this rifted crag area right by the starting uh, the land masses are going to be very low level, like level five, level six, very easy. To pick. And they share the same habitat with the Kelpsy Ignis as well. So rather than going to the volcano area, which is higher level, come grab them at like level five, level six in this little crag spot. Lastly is a water build, which is extremely powerful and uses actually one of my favorite early on pals, the Fwack, which is, um, it's a duck. <laughs> the Fwack. He's very easily accessible. You can see that he drops pretty much right in this early area, this mountainous region where you find the Sparkets. And he is incredibly reliable because all of his early game abilities have low cooldown and high hit rate, which means they're constantly dealing damage. They can deal damage up close. They can deal damage from a range. They don't have these delayed attacks that are ground AOEs. They don't have these projectiles that are really slow. Quack is very reliable and constantly dealing damage, which makes him one of my favorite early pals 
in the game. The next pal you want to add into this is Gobfin. He is actually kind of hard to find in the very early game if you don't know where to look because they don't have a wide range of existing in places. There is a specific spot that's near the starting zone that you can go to. If you leave the starting zone and go north past this mountainous region, past the Red Sands Church, you'll find Gobfins just in this little area here. And they are low enough level that you can grab them, like level eight or so. You can pick them up and capture them, add them to your party. He has an awesome, awesome passive where it increases your attack power and has a lot of really great attacks, including an aqua gun that you can add as well, which is super strong and gives him a really nice balance, I think, against uh, most enemies, including the enemies that the thwack is going to be really strong. And of course, since it's primary water damage, we do want the synergy pal included in this, which is going to be the the uh, normal non-subspecies version of Kelpsy. This is the little seal looking pal. Wall and team increases the attack power of water pal, so both Gobfin and the Fwack will be stronger while you have the Kelpsy in your group. And again, just like the Gobfin, very specific range. You want to go over here past the Red Sands Church to the west, and you'll find the uh, Kelpsies all over in this little area. You can also find them over here on the beaches, and occasionally in some of these beach areas, you would think over here by the celerays and things like that um, and the tea spouts you'd be able to find them here but you just don't uh, the most consistent areas are going to be here and right there for finding the kelpsies and that gives you your bonus attack power for water pal again water has one weakness that is electric and electric is weak to ground so we want to include at least one ground pal in this party to balance things out in case you run into a strong electric enemy you can swap to that when it comes to early game pals i'm actually going to recommend two i actually really like putting leaf monk in this it's a grass type which means it's not going to be suit it's going to be equal damage to the electric which is fine but has a really nice unlock where you can activate it it'll jump on your head and shoot separately from you you can actually unlock a submachine gun mode for the leaf monk and i love having this for the pals that you're not going to have out all the time because you can swap to them use their special ability swap back and you'll get all the value you need from that pal so if you find an electric enemy that your water pals are weak against Swap to Leaf Monk, submachine gun, burn them down, switch back to your water pals, and you're good to go. You'll find Leaf Monk all over the main areas, super low level, like level two, level three. So kind of go towards this little island here, mountain region, and then some of the other peninsulas and, and land masses nearby. You'll find Leaf Monk all over the place. Super easy to pick up. And for our ground to counter electric, I actually do recommend Rush Ore. I don't like Rush Ore as a main pal. I think he can be quite inconsistent if you use him all the time, but he's actually really nice to bring out for a few moments. His rush attack is super strong. And the reason he's in this build is because you can use him as a mount for extra ground speed. You can jump on him, use his rush attack to clear a bunch of distance and jump off, or use him for a slight increase to movement speed while you have him out, which is super nice. And then you can use him for burst. Also use Fuddler, which I mentioned earlier. He's a decent combatant as well, but primarily you're going to swap to these only when your water pals are weak to an electric type that you find that you're running into. And much like the others, you're going to find rush ores all over the place. I think they're minimum level five, but there's, they're all over mountain region they're everywhere and you'll find them on these little ground peninsulas and uh, little islands all over the place as well super easy that is the top five starters for pal world a dark high damage output very easy to get online build an all-rounder that has a lot of tools and abilities that you can use to explore the world a sweep of focus build which you can get like literally you can go to a single spot capture four sui and a sweep -a, and you've got your full party already it's almost instant that you have this thing online the fire build, which is very strong and flexible, and the water build, which is one of my favorites, which is very easy to use and also super effective. And I'll give you one bonus special mention. This is a special mention because I think it has a glaring weakness that is just kind of ridiculous, but it's a ton of fun to use. That is a full Pengullet party. Pengullet is a little penguin. He's, he's dual element water and ice. And you can unlock a pen gullet cannon through the crafting system that allows you to load him into a rocket launcher and fire him as a projectile. The problem with this is that it does insane burst damage, big, big AOE on targets. It's good for clearing bosses and doing large chunks of enemies. However, the damage is also dealt to pen gullet as well, which means that either one or two uses, pen gullet's going to become incapacitated and become useless, and you have to go back to base put them in your pal box to recover, which takes 10 minutes, and then you can use them again. So if you're just gonna be focusing on your own personal damage and you just wanna have a burst 
that's kind of silly and kind of funny and kind of ridiculous, then you can use this build, just bring a bunch of pen gullets and swap between them and fire them for extra burst damage. But it's not really super practical as you will end up having to kill off your pen gullets as you use it. When it comes to habitat, you'll find them here in the starting area right next to you. I believe this kind of first rocky area and then follow the road out and you'll find pen gullets in this little slice. You also find them in some of the beach areas on the west side and on the northeast side as well. Uh, as you move around, you'll find these pen gullets. If you found value in today's video, leave a like down below. Leave a comment for the algorithm to help this video get seen by more people. And don't forget to check out my other channels for other content and other stuff and other things.